Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, where we talk a lot about visual journaling, themes related to life, love, and art, where I tend to share my process and ramble on about things that I think matter, especially about art and the role of creativity in our lives, and really experiencing what I call the six pillars of a radiant life. And this week, I have been working in a huge old, this is a hardcover magazine called Horizons. One of my um, viewers shared that it stopped publication in 1989, and I was so lucky to find some copies of this. So in yesterday's video, we painted the cover. I kept this gorgeous image on the that was on the cover of this hardbound book which has a hot air balloon and to me it speaks of adventure and exploration so I'm going to consider this particular book a book all about exploration and what we're going to be doing today is experimenting with watercolor and watercolor grounds in this journal because Judy good morning Judy asked such a great question yesterday and so I want to play a little bit with that today so I'm gonna switch my camera here happy to see all of you thank you for joining me live thank you for watching the replay I so appreciate you I invite you to please take a minute good morning Barbara to take a minute to hit the like button on the video to subscribe to get notified when I am going live. I'm here most Mondays to Thursdays and an occasional Friday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And I would love your help and support in getting the word out about this Painting in Your PJs live series. So let me pop over here to my hover cam and we're going to get started. So I'm already really loving this big hardbound journal it looks completely different than the other one that I created using this big horizons magazine but what we're going to talk about today is using Daniel Smith watercolor ground to create a watercolor surface in our journal on just plain inexpensive I ended up putting it on some of the kind of more newsprinty paper instead of the glossy paper just to kind of test it out. And so the watercolor ground is a really cool thing and it says in the instructions, which are tiny and tar hard to read, that this works on canvas, paper, plaster, hardboard, but also glass, plastic, metal. And the, the thing that when I first got this I didn't know is that you're supposed to let it cure for 24 to 48 hours. I think that's especially true on canvas or maybe glass or other more por porous surfaces, surfaces. And so I, let me go find the pages. So yesterday I went ahead and put a layer of that watercolor ground down on two of these pages, but I wanted to show you the consistency. It's very much like matte medium. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and let me grab, here's a glossy page as well, and grab just my chip brush here. You want to use definitely a really dry brush for this. You, you can water it down, but I found that I liked it better. So it's kind of a thick consistency similar to matte medium, and you literally just brush it on. I know you guys can't see that going on but you brush it on the whole page and then best case scenario is to let that dry and for 24 hours and I love using this in my one of my favorite purchase journals is a Hanamula sketch diary and it has kind of newsprinty sketchbook paper in it and so I often will just go through pages and I will gesso some and I will put watercolor grounds on them. So it goes on nice and smooth. You can see that's a little bit glossy there where that went on and it's quite wet. So we'll set this aside to dry and it'll be fun to play on 
a more glossy page with that watercolor ground, but that's it's such a simple application of the of the material. And that trick again is to make sure to let it dry for at least 24 hours. So again, I live someplace where it's very dry and I think that things dry fast. So we'll see. I painted this uh, with the watercolor ground like three o'clock yesterday afternoon. So I've grabbed some of my favorite watercolor here. And I think I'm going to lower my camera. Give me just a second. And um, I know that's jerky. Sorry for the dizzying effect there. Just get a little bit closer here. So I love these are the watercolor kits that we create for our retreats um, with Andrea and myself, our creative stretch retreats. And we have another one coming up in San Jose in October. These are all Daniel Smith watercolors, which are my favorite watercolors, which I learned about from my friend Andrea Shebelu at a work of art studio. And they're really pigment rich. They last forever. So this is from April a year ago, and I use them quite a bit. So I'm trying to decide if I want to start big or small. I think I'm going to just come in with a really big brush. I'm going to add some water to these. You can tell some of my favorite colors need some refills in here. And I'm going to work wet on dry, and let's just see what happens. I'm going to work wet on dry and see what happens. There's a gorgeous ultramarine blue here. And I'm like, this doesn't look like the page I painted. I think I'm on the wrong page. Is that right? Because the one I painted had different images on it, but it feels right. All right, give me just a second. I glued a couple of pages together. But I thought I had picked, no, I guess this is the right page. Yeah, it definitely is because I can feel some of that texture on there. It's hard to tell, right? Because it is that um, surface. All right, we're just going to go for it and see it because I can feel that texture on there. And it kind of beads up and does some interesting things on the page. But what it does, again, is it just protects the surface so the page doesn't get overly wet and completely disintegrate. And I love playing with watercolors and just kind of seeing what they're going to do on the page. And let's just get some nice, big, bold areas of color. And I'm curious because I know that I don't have that watercolor on every single part of the page. And I didn't have a plan where for what I was going to do or create today. So I'm just going to play with some color and kind of see what happens. But then I also want to come in and play with watercolor also over the top of gesso to see what that effect is like and then on a page that doesn't have the watercolor ground as well and so you can see that my paper is acting very much like watercolor paper but the cool thing about watercolor paper that doesn't happen on these thinner papers is that ability to get your paint to really spread and create some cool effects so let's see if we get this in here. We don't get quite that same spread that we do on watercolor paper on this paper. And I don't know how much this is going to buckle either. So everything is just kind of that joyful experiment. But what I love about the watercolor ground is I get some interesting effects because the surface isn't flat, it does have that texture that you don't always get when you're sort of playing with other things. And so I'm just kind of having fun with color here. And one of the ways that I like to experiment with watercolor is to play with my brush marks and to see how many different 
marks I can make simply with a paintbrush. I talk about this a little bit in my found objects class as well, which went live this week and now is available on Teachable, where I talk about how to make really original marks and make your art your own using found objects around your neighborhood and around your house. I had so much fun creating that. So there's just a simple watercolor page. What I'm noticing is that the paint is just sort of sitting on the surface. So this one feels like it has a little bit more texture. So maybe we'll come in here. And what if we did just something a little landscapey? And I'm still trying to work kind of dry and not have these pages get too wet because I'm just not sure what they're going to do. So maybe we've got a little pond action going on here. And I'm not trying to mix colors. I'm just kind of quickly using the, the colors that I have in this limited palette. I do have tons and tons of watercolor that I thought for our exploration this morning. That came out more gray than brown, but we're just going to go with it. And so I'm, I'm happy with how the color is reacting on the page. And I also want to turn to a page that doesn't have the watercolor ground on it and see what happens. So the fun part of this for me is it's all just exploration, right? It's all just simply an experiment. Let me get some trees going here around edges of our little pond. Good morning, Yvonne. So just having some fun, playing with marks, seeing how the watercolor reacts to this paper, and having the watercolor grounds on the paper as well. Just having a little fun. Nothing too specific. I'm not trying to create anything. Maybe giving those trees a little bit of trunks. Good morning, Marion. Great to see you here this week. Hope things are calming down over there for you a little bit. Oh, I love that. I don't remember all the names of these offhand, but I love that bright blue. And so this page, I didn't glue to the other page, so I just have this one thin page here. Oh, maybe we'll just let that run around and see what happens, which is always fun to do with watercolor and can create interesting effects and marks on the page. Move it around. And watercolor is always one of those tools that is just a big learning process for me. And I tend to love to play and experiment and not take my watercolor too seriously. I really love this little sketchy image here, so I'm not going to paint him out. All right, so we have a little bit of paint down on these pages that have the watercolor grounds on them that I did let dry for 24 hours. I'm going to hit this with the dryer. Then I want to experiment on a page that doesn't have any watercolor ground on it. And I want to play with the watercolor over gesso, which creates some interesting effects. But what I'm noticing here is this, you know, acted like an okay watercolor paper, maybe not a magnificent watercolor paper. 
it's definitely still absorbent, right? It's definitely still absorbent. But how fun, good morning, Blanca, but how fun to just get some color very easily into these journal pages. And what I'm thinking about over here is how much fun I'm going to have coming back in with a black pen and maybe adding some details into this page over here. Let me hit this with my dryer. All right, it's dry enough so that I can close it up. What I'm noticing is this is a single page. This page I use Map Medium and glued two pages together to see if it would make a difference. This one has stayed much smoother, and this one ended up buckling quite a bit, which is interesting. I always, you know, pay attention to how watercolors look so much different when they're dry than when they're wet, so I can see where I'm going to want to come in and maybe bring in a second layer of color as well. I can see where there's no watercolor ground in the center here, that that wetness is bleeding right through my page, which is what can cause our pages to tear. So next time I would make sure that I got that watercolor sealer right into the center of my book as well. But you can see how that watercolor ground really protected the page. You can see a couple of spots where maybe I didn't get it on as thick as other spots. And again, it bled through here. It did not come through these double pages here. So I'm curious what would happen if I put watercolor on a page that's unsealed. I think that's really a way to, to see the difference. And I was so fascinated by the articles in this magazine and Marion, you've got me all excited to go look online now and see if I can find some more copies because they really have some amazing articles in them <clears throat> as well. Okay, from the shapely form to a new art form. I have no idea what that's about. So I'm still working wet on dry. And let's see what happens to this page. Interesting, the, the watercolor paint is bubbling up differently. It's not adhering to the surface as nicely. It's sort of instantly kind of disappearing and probably getting absorbed right into the surface. And it's not going through the back yet, but my sense is that it will. I sort of love this pretty little illustration here. Watercolor is one of my favorite tools for doing mindful meditation on the page as well. So I'm literally just playing with paint. One color, I just want to see what the paint is going to do on this page. You notice how it's much drier. It's not keeping the same, um, it's not reacting the same at all to this page as it did to the page with the, the watercolor ground. And yes, Avon, I shared at the beginning, where did I just, oh, it's got buried under here. Um, I use this Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground on the page. We can look at how matte medium would work with watercolor too, but because it's a little plasticky, it, tends to beat up, but I'm also going to do some testing on some gesso here in a minute. But this Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground is what I used. And I did put it on there 
yesterday and let it dry. It says on the instructions that it's supposed to dry for 24 to 48 hours. And I think on paper that 24 hours is definitely enough. So it's not bleeding through, but it's definitely not as nice of a surface to paint on. So I'm just going to dry that off a little bit. I'll come back and do something different with this page. I might put gesso all, all over the whole page, but I can feel the page is much wetter, whereas these pages feel much drier and that wetness did not go through to the back of the page at all. All right, so this has the most interesting illustrations and a whole article about hot air balloons. That's super, super fun. So yesterday I put some gesso down on this page with this really cool Leo the Lion map. And so I want to just get some watercolor down on this page that's been gessoed. And let's see what the watercolor does on this page. It goes on pretty nicely because, again, we've sealed the paper. We don't, again, get this sort of nice spreads of color that we might with the watercolor grounds. But the gesso isn't bad, Judy. I think you asked yesterday about could we use watercolor over gesso. You definitely can. It just creates a different surface. Again, notice that the, the color doesn't adhere to the surface. It tends to pool, fade out pretty quickly. So I would have to put maybe a few different layers in there to really create some pools of color. So let's see what happens if we just sort of layer in some color. It definitely just doesn't react the same as it does on the watercolor grounds or on some nice watercolor paper. Doesn't mean it's wrong or anything. It just means that it's different, right? It's really different. Um, and I think what I was wanting was really just some solid color on here and that I'm maybe going to add some journal writing and some illustration. And for sure I will, Mary, and I'm thinking I'm going to look on Craigslist and see if anybody is selling any on Craigslist. That's a great question, Judy. I don't know that um, it would serve a purpose to have the watercolor grounds on top of the gesso unless you just were wanting that background, but that's a definitely another fun experiment that I could play with this weekend and then um, report back next week. So I'm really liking this. Well, now I got a little yellow and a little gold. Let's bring in a second layer. Again, the color just pools, which is interesting. Shows the texture of the gesso underneath not quite like it's not smooth like watercolor paper and it's definitely I love the transparency of it so again I always love working in layers so what I do love here is that you know I didn't put the gesso on super thick so I'm still seeing some of those words peeking through like that sort of palimpsest concept that we talked about yesterday and I love, love, love this bright yellow. It's another gloomy, cloudy day. I'm so grateful yesterday was a gorgeous, sunny day. Oh, and my husband and I found a huge used bookstore in Fort Collins yesterday. My son had told us about it, but we hadn't actually had a, a chance to visit. And we had a fun adventure over there. All right, so I got a little bit of that pinky orange still showing through, so maybe we'll just come in and see what we can do if we blend colors. 
So it creates interesting texture and movement on the page. It's sitting on the surface. It's not absorbing into the page, which is a good thing. So the gesso is protecting the, the page. And I think maybe I also glued these pages to the pages on either side of it yesterday. So it makes this really interesting surface. And now we're just going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to get this dry. And then I don't know where we're going to go next, but we'll figure it out. And I'll think about it. I do like the look of the paint on the gesso, right? Um, yes, adore old used bookstores. And uh, my husband's birthday is next weekend. So this morning I booked a hotel room over in Boulder, which is one of our favorite places to visit, and our most favorite bookstore, a beautiful independent bookstore called the Boulder Bookstore. Oh, I also wanted to experiment with the Derwents on top of some of this stuff too. So the Eat Tense blocks, I've got those here to play with as well. But let me get this a little bit dry. You guys can tell me if you can hear that and how noisy it is. Is it better when I mute myself when I'm drying it? All right, so we got this mostly dry. Oh, interesting how it just comes right up off that gesso. Didn't leave any color behind, but really love the, the look of this one. Watercolor takes longer to dry than acrylic, so I'm just blotting some of that away. So this is gonna be a fun page to work on next week. I don't know where I'm gonna go with that page yet. Let's see. All right, so this was the one I painted with the watercolor ground as we were getting started. It's not 100% dry yet. So here's, let's see what happens when we have a page that's not 100% dry. And I'm being impatient and not waiting for it to dry. It's still a little slick, but it says on the, um, okay, awesome, great, thanks, Marion. Um, it says on the jar that you're not supposed to use a heat tool on this. I don't know if that destroys the integrity of the, the surface or if it makes it bubble, but let's see what happens when we put some Derwents. And this is such a fun way to work. So I put watercolor on a few pages in my journal. This will make great collage fodder. And just doing a whole bunch of pages at once means that they're prepared and ready for the, the next thing. So if you're not familiar with Derwent Ink Tents pencils and blocks, they are like a watercolor pencil, but they're, they really are intense. They're very highly pig pigmented. I love them. They're permanent when they dry, unlike a watercolor. You can even use them on fabric and heat seal them with an iron and then you can wash the fabric. So they're a super, super cool tool. Definitely on the more expensive end of art supplies. But let's see what we can do on this page and I can feel where it's still just a little bit damp. And so again, I did not patiently wait for this to dry for 24 hours. Seems to work pretty well with those Derwents. This is interesting. 
Um, this is all, this is a punch cartoon about the relentless crawl of housing developments over the English countryside. That's what the, the cartoon is about, which is pretty funny. So again, this one was from 1958. And it's interesting to see how many of these topics are still so relevant today and how little has actually changed across time. So a fun experiment with the Derwents. What I love about Derwents, you can use them dry. You can dip them directly into water and use them that way and get some really, really vibrant colors going. So here's an example of when I'm putting this down on the page and I'll bring this up closer to the camera. You can see the actual texture of the watercolor ground. It creates kind of a sketchy texture, so it's not a completely smooth surface on there. Gorgeous purple. Interesting quote up here on solitude. It says, by taking a certain amount of trouble, you might still be able to get yourself eaten by a bear in New York State. Solitude is receding at the rate of four and a half kilometers per annum. Aldous Huxley in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. And actually you can see some of that texture under here, kind of fun. Maybe because it's not completely dry, I got a little bit more texture on the page. And then the other thing that you can do with the, the blocks is that you can use them just like a hard watercolor, right? And just get it wet and put your, get the paint right directly on your brush. And I love how rich and pigmented these colors are. So again, a loose page like this is probably something that I would tear up and use at some point for collage materials. But I'm pretty happy with the Derwents, even though I didn't let this dry for a long time. I'm pretty happy with these Derwents over the top of that watercolor ground. It kind of worked nicely there as well. And I know they work over the gesso. I've used them before with the gesso. And again, this is how we learn to use our supplies and our tools, is to allow ourselves just to practice and play. Well, that's a weird green, a very dark olive green. And to never feel like we're wasting supplies or materials because everything is reusable, we can be repurposed for other things. And again, so this was on the glossy paper instead of the newsprinty paper. What I'm noticing the difference is I can see where the water is coming through. And that I think is the big difference between allowing the watercolor ground to cure for 24 hours so that I actually get that surface sealed, right? So I think that's the, the big difference there. All right, so that was an interesting experiment. And now I'm curious what would happen with one of these nice glossy pages and my Derwents if I don't seal the page with anything, right? If I don't seal the page with anything, if I just simply come in and start to so in, they don't adhere to this glossy surface. You can see that those lines are pretty faint. I'm having to kind of work kind of hard to just get some marks down on the page. I pulled an oracle card this morning, and the oracle card was the phoenix. So it has me thinking about fire this morning. So don't love how this is reacting to the unsealed surface. Don't love how this is reacting to the unsealed surface. What about if I get it wet? Okay, then, oh, it glides on like lipstick. 
like a gelato, right? So that made a big difference to get the stick wet. I got a lot more pigment on the surface. So let's try that again with our red. So again, this kind of experimentation should be fun and playful. And the thing about these pages that, oops, knock my camera off, that I experiment on like this, I tend to just gesso over them and then just continue working on them. So I'm just getting some marks and some color down on the page. So not coming through the other side, that glossy paper is kind of nice. But what happens usually with glossy paper like this is that a lot of my marks will stay visible underneath. I won't get as much of that dissolving as I would. So I can still see some of the sketchy marks through, which is kind of fun. OK, that is a super messy page. So I'm going to get this dry, and then I'm going to put some gesso over the top of it, and let's just see what happens. So this feels like a fun morning just to play and experiment with these different papers in the book. And I love that these books, these Horizon magazines, never seen a hardbound magazine like this, so it's extra cool. But I love that it has two different types of paper to experiment with, the glossy paper and also the newsprint paper. And because I didn't get the page too wet, I can see where some water has pooled. I get a little bleed through. I'm fascinated by all the, the pictures that are in here. OK, so let's try. I'm going to stick a little matte medium on this other page over here. Well, OK, a lot of matte medium because that came pouring out. And where'd all my? Looking for my scraper here. So I stuck this in my water jar with my brushes because I had some paper, and that matte medium tends to gum it up quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to get some matte medium down on this one. I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll try some watercolor and Derwent over the top of the matte medium. was a lot of matte medium. So if I bring that matte medium over here also, I'm going to seal that color in, and then I'm going to put gesso over the, the top of it. So I'm noticing that that color isn't completely permanent. It's mixing a little bit with my matte medium, but not a lot. I don't know if you guys are enjoying this, but I definitely have uh, been having a ton of fun just playing and experimenting on these pages. It's why I love using repurposed books. I didn't, you know, I bought this for 25 cents. I don't feel like I'm wasting a book or a lot of paper. It's not taking a lot of supplies. And it's just kind of a super fun way to experiment. Um, Getting ready for a week of travel and we'll be away. Awesome. Ink tents, pencils, and water brush. Great tool to travel with. I love that. And the watercolor ground is great. Barbara, where are you off to? Are you off to somewhere fun? Great. Glad you guys are enjoying this. And Marion, glad I'm getting messy for you. This one's actually not super messy. All 
right. One of the things, uh, oh, the Keys, Everglades, and Biscayne National Park. Oh, love it. Have a blast. That sounds amazing. One of the things that I do love about watercolor is it's not nearly as messy as acrylic. So I've just got some gesso now down on the page. So ink tents, little matte medium to seal the page, and now some gesso, just a thin layer of gesso. I really love the Liquitex gesso. It's not super, super opaque. I can make it opaque with a couple of layers if I need it to be. But now I have this interesting page. It's already got some layers going. We've gotten it pretty wet now. Matte medium is great for sealing pages. And so again, I have a page that is ready to go in my journal for something else, whatever might come next. And I'm curious about these interesting portraits up here. And you know how I love to put paint down, take paint away. So I'm wondering if I can even, because I put that matte medium down and sealed that in, I can bring those portraits back. No idea who they are, but they're kind of fun and funky. And what if those portraits somehow became the centerpiece of the story that this page wants to tell? I love they still have some of that ink tense under there. So, okay, super interesting page. So now we have a page over here with just matte medium on it. I'll come back and dig in this. I think this was a quinacridone magenta. And again, look at how it pools. And it didn't do that with the watercolor ground. The watercolor ground really, act, they are very ghostly with that little bit of gesso over the top of them. But look how that watercolor pools. It doesn't act like watercolor normally does because it's like as if we were putting watercolor on top of plastic, right, is kind of what that matte medium surface creates. So it creates interesting texture but doesn't necessarily create maybe that smoothness. So even when I work it a little more, you can see how it pulls away, pulls itself back into the, the puddles. So interesting experiment to just play there. And let's see what happens with our ink tents. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that just having that little bit of matte medium on the page creates a little bit of tooth on the page. And so my ink tents are just going on a little bit smoother. Also, again, just seeing some of the, the texture of the strokes underneath, which is interesting. And what happens if we get some water going here? It's a fun color. I thought it was going to be more orangey, burnt sienna-y. So I like this better than the watercolor. I'm still seeing some of the strokes. And I definitely like it better than the ink tents on the glossy paper. So fun experiments all the way around to just see what's possible. Again, all the tools that we use today were simple. Nothing was too complex. 
and it feels like these are all beginnings of pages that I can decide where I want to go next with them. And I'm kind of feeling like it would be fun to do some more pages with the watercolor grounds and experiment with some abstract florals. I'm working on a collaborative project with someone who does machine embroidery, and I've been tasked with doing a bouquet of watercolor flowers that is going to get used for a machine embroidery project. Super excited about it. And so maybe this will be one of the, the fun ways that I experiment with that process. So fascinating how this is the watercolor is just really pooling up. It's creating some very interesting shapes. So this would be fun to come back in with a black pen, letting that watercolor and do some just abstract doodling and drawing in some of those spaces and shapes there. Definitely like the Derwent better over the, the matte medium. And now I'm super curious. So we have matte medium, gesso, ink tents. Now what would happen? And I am going to see if I can get a little brighter green here. If I brought more watercolor in, because I'm kind of seeing these guys as maybe some strange abstract bouquet. There's a face in the pink. I love how you see faces of Yvonne, so fun. I can see a, a nose and an eye and maybe another eye there and a mouth here. I was taking somebody's face drawing class one time and I remember they said that uh, once you started drawing faces that you would start to see faces everywhere. So again, the, the watercolor over the gesso, just it's just very different, right? It doesn't spread. It doesn't move as much. It kind of fades into the page in some interesting ways. So a little drier brush there and a little more pigment. I can actually sort of draw on the page. I tend to see them everywhere too, Yvonne. I'm still getting some of those colors underneath bleeding through. So just, again, that interesting exploration, not loving the watercolor over the gesso, but fun to explore. So super fun experiment. So just a, a quick recap. So this was watercolor directly onto newsprint. And what I noticed was I worked pretty dry, so I didn't get bleed through, but it doesn't spread, right? It doesn't have that nice flow that watercolor normally has. These have the watercolor grounds, and I can see how the watercolor reacted like I expected watercolor to, and now I have something I can go back and finish. So this one was all kinds of things layered together. This was ink tents and watercolor on top of the gesso. And then this was also watercolor over gesso, which as it's dried, has created some really interesting movement and texture on the page. So I actually like this one better now that it's had a chance to, to dry and we get the watercolor just where it pooled and dried, get some really marvelous shapes happening in there. And then we had this one where it was just the, the ink tents over 
a semi-dry page of watercolor ground and I've got some fun scratchy, scratchy marks and texture on the page but it did it sealed that that glossy paper pretty nicely and it's drying pretty quickly I can feel like this piece over here maybe the watercolor ground wasn't there or wasn't dry so I can see where it wasn't sealed see where the water is coming through either that watercolor ground wasn't dry or I didn't have a complete coat of it on there so I think it's important one to get a really solid coat of the watercolor grounds and then two to really give it that 24 hours to dry in order to have it do exactly what we want it to. So super fun way to get my Friday morning started with a lot of playful energy. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'm playing with my camera, so it's not always just quite so much seeing my hands, but I appreciate all of you for joining me live to play today. If you loved this video and you're watching the replay, please hit that like button so we can encourage more people to watch and subscribe to Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette. And I'll see you all on Monday. And I'm going to keep working and playing in this journal. And Mary and I'm going to do some research on Horizons this weekend and see what else I can find. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will see you all soon.